What were you talking about with uh, Mr. DeSantis? Oh, um, what was I talking about with DeSantis? Oh, so I was while while I was waiting for somebody to again chit chat with to t- kind of test the Discord functionality. Um, mm-hmm. I was responding to comments from people on my uh, YouTube channel and on my TikTok. And so one of the things that I'm trying to make a a point to point out smugly and aggressively is that cancel culture is not like an exclusively leftist province. You know, it it has its uh, it's it has its iterations before the advent of social media and conservatives Mm -hmm. are absolutely willing, ready and eager to cancel those they don't like. I mean, they've done it for decades. And so I think they have poisoned the well and successfully reframed canceling as something that the left does. And kind of like when it comes to the economy, um, I think we've been too lazy on the left and allowing conservatives to frame it that way. Like, yeah, you know, the Republican Party, maybe they are good for the economy, but but we, we have the moral superiority on social issues. When actually it's both, like we we are better on social issues and we're actually better for the economy. So there's no point in in seeding that ground because it's dishonest, wrong, and it helps them. Same thing with cancel culture. And um, I was talking how uh, Governor DeSantis is absolutely willing to leverage the power of the state against people and groups and companies that he doesn't like, like Disney. I mean, what he attempted to do with disney yeah. down in your state that was canceling he you know he mm-hmm. didn't like what disney did politically by speaking out against the don't say gay bill and so he attempted to revoke a special tax status that disney enjoyed for decades and desantis was fine to let them have it until they dared challenge him and he reacted you know very uh, pettily and very vindictively that's canceling so uh, i was just pointing citing him as an example of you know we really need to keep pointing that out that actually be it a black football player kneeling before the flag or a country music group criticizing president bush or whatever the right is really eager to you know you know inflict reputational professional and financial consequences on people that they don't like so yeah i'm i mean to just as an addendum to that we, we can look at like libs of tiktok and i mean that's it's really like a, a cancel culture uh um, what's the word like like it, it just churns out character um for for the right to be to be pissed at um and and to to, to threaten their jobs uh honestly and 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 livelihood and just existence um and uh you know i i mean i <laughs> as someone uh, as, a, as a lefty who's currently banned on twitter with no indication of why um i uh i, I definitely feel uh, I feel like I've been canceled, and I, I didn't even I didn't even get to post anything edgy, you know. Um, and just... it, and to and to be fair, it it's probably unlikely that you were canceled by a fellow lefty. I guess it's possible that you pissed one of them off, but more than likely, you were canceled by some anonymous conservatives who were upset yeah. at you dunking on righties. Yeah, that's that's uh, definitely more likely the case. I, I I may have poked the hornet's nest by by jumping in and arguing with that. Uh, with Jack Posobiec and his community. Um, uh, I mean, he just kind of memed on me and called me Jeffrey Dahmer, which is fine. But uh, I think I think following that, uh, uh, I'm not really sure. I feel like I feel like being called Jeffrey Dahmer would be more flattering than being called Jack Posobiec. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like of all, yeah, I feel like of all the insults you could levy at a person, I feel like Jeffrey Dahmer would be as awful as he was more palatable than just being Jack Posobiec, you know? Um, no, the libs of TikTok example is a really good one. And it's one that I tend to, I tend to forget about it, not because it's not important, but because, you know, I, to me, I don't want to say cancel culture to me. It, yeah, it is a political issue, but it's also a culture issue. And I just get so tired of culture war debates and like, like for, okay. And I don't want to fractal off, in a gazillion different ways yet, you know, especially because we're, we're talking about some interesting things, but like, I have been very reluctant to opine about people like Andrew Tate and Sneeko and whatnot, not because it doesn't have political relevance with respect to ideas of speech, but because it's just more kind of like BS culture war shit, as far as I'm concerned, uh, compared to like 
things that matter as, as, a, as a matter of policy. Um, so I tend to just gloss over libs of TikTok, but actually I think libs of TikTok is an even better example than the stuff I was talking about because one of the guys I was commenting to or I was responding to, he commented on one of my uh, YouTube shorts is um, when I cited examples of like um, Colin Kaepernick and the Dixie Chicks and Bill Maher and Target and all these examples of conservative targets of cancel culture, his refrain was, his response was, okay, like, like he kind of like tacitly conceded, okay, we boycott, whatever. But the left, they go after the average person. And I was like, citation needed. I, I'm not aware of that. Like every example I can think of, for the most part, um, have, have been like celebrities, really powerful people, the elite. Libs of TikTok is a great example of that is a well-oiled conservative machine designed to attack relative nobodies, right? They're not going after Leonardo DiCaprio or whoever else. They're going after like teachers and, you know, like trans people, you know, just living their lives. They just happen to have a social media presence. So that's an even better example. I need to keep remembering that. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's definitely a good example of that. Um, I, 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 overall, like, I'm glad that you're you're touching on this sentiment because it's something I've, I've I have been thinking a lot a lot about recently, not just in light of uh, my recent band, but like, um, just thinking about the way that, uh, yeah, it, it like when I hear cancel culture, it's almost always somebody complaining about like people being too woke. Yeah, and and I, I like I think like. I think back to like, um, I mean, Brett Kavanaugh is is on the Supreme Court. Like he he was canceled, um, you know. But he was canceled um, upwards somehow, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't yeah. know how that worked. It seems, it seems like that happens. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, I mean, Louis C.K. is touring again. Like you canceled um, Brett Kavanaugh so hard, he is one of nine Supreme Court justices with you know this yeah. this like super sweet lifetime gig essentially determining american jurisprudence and constitutional questions you canceled him so hard you woke libs yeah all the way to the top yeah um, uh but you were saying uh what was your example i'm sorry after uh brett kavanaugh oh i mentioned like louis ck uh mm -hmm. is like touring mm -hmm. again and everything like he came back pretty quickly sure um overall i mean especially considering like uh, i i don't know like it seemed like like maybe he, he would he would stick back for a little bit longer at least i don't know um it just doesn't seem like a lot of these things really hold um, or have a lot of staying power um I, maybe, maybe there's like a sweet spot where where like really small or like not really small but like middle size like creators or characters um i say characters like, like they're, i mean these are real people obviously but like um like people who don't have these like massive followings but they have like enough of a following for people to care if they fuck up um and, and maybe maybe the consequences are are more even then I, I don't know i don't know of any specific examples but i i it feels like that could be a more practical uh if, if we are gonna like see results of cancel culture or see like like negative like the real harms it seems like that's probably where it would mostly hit um but i don't know yeah i think i mean that, i think that's a fair point if there are examples of cancel culture which have been decisive and permanent. Uh, I don't know of any. Uh, maybe they're out yeah. there. And, um, you know, it, it's usually just like a, it's it's just like a widespread social shunning that has a shelf life. So like Louis C.K. was kind of persona non grata for like a year, maybe two. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even weighing in on whether or not that, that time frame should have been longer or shorter just simply saying that it wasn't permanent. He was a multimillionaire at the time he was canceled, so it wasn't like he was out on the streets. And as, a, as you say, um, he's probably as popular as he ever was. He's certainly touring, and he's able to actually, as a matter of fact, um, profit off that, two, that one to two year forced sabbatical because he's able to appeal to people. Like, oh, I was canceled. You know, I was shunned. And, and as we know, there's a... 
you know, a strong 30 to 35 percent of this country, maybe 40, who are willing to fork over large sums of money to people who have grievance politics. I don't even know if, if Louis C.K. does that. I, I was never really a fan of his to begin with. Well, I, I but... do remember the, the comeback tour. I, I remember I listened like when he when he first uh, I say comeback tour, um, but like when he was first doing we was first touring again after like he was kind of pushed out of it. Um, I remember the things he was joking about were like, uh, uh, I think it was like the Parkland kids or something. It, I don't know. It, it was like, it, it was, it was an edgy, I mean, he's, he's Louis CK. He's always edgy, but like, um, I, I don't remember the exact punchline, but it was, it, it was like, I, I felt like the target audience of that joke were the people who were like, why is Louis CK canceled? But you know, um, like the same the same target audience that would that would be upset at, at the idea of him being canceled um whatever that means to them yeah i mean so so i i mean it it would it intuitively it makes sense that now he has a certain demographic that he either is more appealing to or you know or is able to financially benefit from um i you know the when i think of a you know, I'm thinking of the conversation I was having with this guy uh, at, on YouTube, the, the person I was ref referencing before you jumped on, the comments back and forth. And when he says that the left goes after the average person, and I was like, you know, citations needed. I need some examples. The only one I could think of, and again, it really wasn't the left. It was one young person doing it to another was that um, that example of that, that girl in high school, it, it, it was, it made the rounds on media. I think even the New York times covered it. Um, she was a high school student and either as a freshman or sophomore, she got her license and she either said the N word or something like that, either when she was rapping a lyric in her new car or she like, she did something, but she sent it on TikTok or social media, Snapchat, something like that. And a fellow classmate saved it. And he sat on it for two years. And then when she went to apply for colleges and got accepted, uh, he released it. And then the college that accepted her revoked the acceptance. And it, that story was covered. I remember, I, I think Destiny covered it, Vosh covered it, and I remember hearing about it just even independent of them. And I thought that was pretty shitty, especially because if she, um, um, that was, this happened either right, just right after or during the George Floyd protests in 2020. I want to say the story was 2021, as a matter of fact, I do think. So it was a year after. And based on her social media profile, you're not a mind reader, right? But you can just go based on the evidence. She'd actually become uh, an ally to Black Lives Matter. She was, you know, using her social media to kind of advocate. I, I certainly remember like the Black Square and, you know, talking mm -hmm. about how Black Lives Matter and whatnot. So um, that that whole story was, was super messed up. And uh, the kid who kept that, you know, video and then unleashed it, um, he suffered social consequences too. I mean, he was ravaged by people who were like, that was vindictive and cruel and he didn't offer a road to redemption. So he suffered the consequences too of his actions. So both people were hurt by this, but that wasn't the left. That wasn't, you know, Joe Biden. That wasn't Bernie Sanders. That wasn't AOC. That wasn't MSNBC. It wasn't CNN. So even like an example like that, I'm thinking, who are you talking about? That was one 17 or 18 year old kid uh, being a dick to another 17 or 18 year old kid for something stupid that they did two years ago. You know, that to me is not a decisive example of leftist cancel culture, um, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I'm, in, I'm inclined to agree. And also, I'm, I, I'm trying to open up the New York Times article on this, but uh, I, I see this headline. Um, that she withdrew from her chosen college after the three second. Debate. Gotcha. Okay, so they didn't even revoke it. Well, I mean, there might have been um, there might have been pressures from I, I I can I can't get the I don't have a New York Times subscription. So I do. Um, let me um, I'm bougie you know, that way. Let me uh, let me no, find I, it here. Can you I drop the link? Uh, yeah, I can, but I have to open it up on like some on two different computers right now. 
I have I'm logged onto my Discord account on this computer, and I have no other way to access this account except for on this computer. So I need see, to I it. thought I was bougie, but here you are rocking not only the fingerless gloves but the two computers. Okay, you should you're basically in a position to buy the New York Times. You should have an account. You would think. Yeah, but uh, but they, yeah, they're still charging me. So it's what's the headline? I'll just Google it. That's super simple. Yeah, a, a racial slur, a viral video, and a reckoning. It's a, a good headline. That is, that's like very powerful. Okay, so it was March 2021. All right, let me bring up. Uh, oh, the one I'm looking at is December twenty, December 2020. Huh? Oh, it was initially published in up uh, 2020 and updated March 18th. Uh, okay, so let me do. It's a good test. Let me do. Oh shit! There we go. Okay. So, um, this will be a good test. A racial slur, a viral video, and a reckoning. A white high school student withdrew from her chosen college after a three-second video caused an uproar online. The classmate who shared it publicly has no regrets. Uh, I don't want to give this kid in trouble. Let's just say, let's just do a control F for college. Because there again, bringing this story back to, you know, you don't want right-wing trolls punishing this kid or the or left-wing whatever punishing the the kid he punished so let's yeah, see yeah. okay so uh mr galligan who waited until miss groves had chosen a college had publicly posted the video that afternoon within hours had been shared to snapchat tiktok and twitter where furious calls mounted for the university of tennessee to revoke its admission and offer by that june evening about a week after mr floyd's uh killing the consequences were swift. Over the next two days, Miss Groves was reviews, re removed from the university's cheer team. She then withdrew from the school under pressure from admissions officials who told her they'd received hundreds of emails and phone calls from outraged alumni students in the public. So I will, I, I do think, I mean, technically, yeah, she withdrew, but it, it was under a degree of duress. So I think that's fair to say, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that wasn't just a voluntary her falling on the sword. That was a I'm it's either withdraw or I'm going to be kicked or my tenure here is going to be absolutely miserable. Yeah. And and that is a that is a messed up example, but to me that's not like it's so disingenuous to imply that that is the norm. Where's the evidence for that, you know? Um and again, if you read that article, I'm pretty sure the uh the um uh the person who posted the video, um, he has suffered reputational and social consequences as a result too. So I don't know. I, I just, I don't like the whole framing of it because again, you know, you can always find examples of anything. Um, and to sit and pretend that that's the norm, that's something else that right-wingers do that I feel like, I'm not going to say that the left doesn't fight back on, but we have not cracked the code in successfully refuting it. So, like, you had, um, did you have a conversation? I'm trying to think of some of your debates or conversations, some of the the panels that you were on. Did Was one of the subjects ever critical race theory or something like that? Yeah, that's what I talked about with uh, uh, Andrew Wilson and, and Rob Noir for, like, four hours. Oh, my God. Uh, uh by the way, kudos to you for I, I, the the conversation. I've said this like I've talked to Destiny about this, uh, Luke Beasley, um, and others that when they were like, you know, it's the most brutal experience of your life. And I'm and I mean, I watched my mother pass away, so that's probably number one. But like top five would be the mind melting experience that I had arguing with Rob Knorr about vaccines. Um, I, I was ill-prepared for it. He was in like seven blogs deep and, you know, citing obscure facts without providing the evidence. And I had no way of like, you know, researching it because he wanted to have the conversation demanded. It had to be that day. Um, so for you to do it for four hours, God bless you. Um, in, in my defense, I guess like Rob Knorr probably wasn't quite as prepared as he probably hadn't done quite as much like research into like critical race theory as I had at that moment. Um, and I was, yeah, I, I felt it was impromptu, but I, I felt pretty prepared. And I've also dealt with Andrew a lot um, historically and since then. So I've, I kind of was, yeah, I, I think I was well situated to engage with both of them at that moment. Um, 
Yeah, so critical race theory is one that, I mean, you don't even hear about it anymore because they've moved on to like two other, you know. Uh, and yet 17 states have uh, have done some sort of successful ban um, on, on quote unquote critical race theory or, or something to that effect. Uh, so it is it is definitely still uh, in in the uh, or the, the conservative ire towards it is, is still active. Yeah, I feel like it's just one of those like background programs, though, at this point, like they haven't like ended the task or anything. It's just no it's like minimized. It's, it's just running in the background. And it's I think you could make the case that it's mutated into subsequent iterations of culture. Now it's like now it's like specifically about trans people and grooming and you know gender affirming care that seems to be the current right wing culture war meta and um but like critical race here i remember having you know arguments with people like okay let's take rufo at face value we shouldn't but i'm gonna be uber generous and um and say well, let's let's take him at face value and on his website he's gathered like I think 12 examples of what he considers critical race theory, this this particular lesson plan from here, this email exchange from this group. So if you like you, and I don't have it, actually I, I do wanna be, I do wanna be precise. So I am gonna look it up on my Gmail notes, but it was something like, um, I don't know, it was like under like a dozen or so examples. And it's like there are 17,000 public school districts in the United States. Mm -hmm. 17,000. So you can cite 12 examples out of 17,000 school districts. That's a statistical blip. What the are you talking about? Um, uh, let me see if I can find and, it here. I think I said this in my conversation with Robin and Andrew, but I think I think like it's it's not surprising that in a in America of all places, when we're discussing something like critical race theory or like racial injustice more broadly um that when most of the teachers are like white women right um who are probably like many of are, are probably not just just not really um like well versed enough to like have like these really hard conversations about race um and, and I, like I, I don't know i think it would i'm surprised there's not more that they have um just given that context alone like I feel like th like there's going to be like rocky like weird edge cases because of that. Sure. Um, and, and but but I feel like the, the solution is like well I mean this the whole point of this is that, to give people like the tools to actually discuss these things in like a productive uh and healthy way that doesn't um it isn't I mean you know people talk about CRT like it's just make it all white people are evil, you know. Um, no. But it's it's like, it's definitely not that um and, and it's it, it's it's it, it definitely at least in my experience it, it can lead to like much more empathetic and productive conversations um with like th those lenses so um yeah it's frustrating yeah I, so so I, I went just to just to kind of hammer that point you know um i went back and checked my notes here and um the early 2021 rufo cited examples from 12 different school districts as evidence crt was pervading a nation whose total number of school districts exceeds 17,000. So this is, and that's again, that's taking the 12 examples that he deigned to cite at completely face value. Just for the sake of argument, you're 100% right. 12 examples of, you know, evil, pervasive, critical race theory in schools. It's 12 different school districts out of 17,000. This isn't the gotcha you think it is. I mean... So why should, even if we take it at face value, why should we take it seriously and why should it be something by which, why should it be a single voter issue? Why should this be any sort of meaningful weight on who a person should vote for or, you know, any indication as to where the political wins in this country should be? This is such a non-issue, statistically speaking. And to me, it's important, you know, but obviously... You know, I'm, as I'm sure you discussed in your examples or in your conversation with Rob Noor, um, many of the examples Rufo cites um, have little asterisks beside them or they were resolved internally. Like I remember looking at one of his examples and the teachers involved were fired. You know, like it, it, it's a self-correcting thing. And as you say, there are a lot of people who are simply ill-equipped to discuss with any sort of dignity and accuracy 
highly sensitive racial issues. So it's not surprising that there is quite a bit of cringe, um, you know, coming from yeah. specific edge cases. And to your point, that the edge cases aren't more numerous than what they are. But and then there's also, of course, the fact that Rufo is, you know, an openly bad faith actor. Um, he's very effective, but I mean, he made it very clear. He published it, you know, on Twitter um, and, of course, deleted the tweet subsequently. But, you know, his objective is to poison the well, to to bundle everything, every grievance that conservatives have with the left or minorities on subject on the subject of race and racial relations they want to pack that CRT, that word, uh, with all of it and make it the new boogeyman. And so, yeah. He said, like, freeze their brand or whatever was the, uh, yes. the language he used. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, you know, is that still a topic that you're, I mean, it sounds like you still remember quite a bit about it. Is it something that uh, you still discuss, or do you also agree that it's yeah. kind of gone on the back burner as far as the current political meta? Um, it might be somewhat on the back burner, but I I, I don't think, it, I, I mean, the last I looked, it was, like I said, it was like 17 states have, have implemented some sort of, of quote unquote critical race theory ban. Um, and that just seems like so, so a lot of my, a lot of the stuff I do is I, I, I'll go into like pretty far or far to my right spaces. Um, and you know, I just kind of join the conversation. I like to, to push back and present like alternative narratives, narratives, to these people and stuff. And I, I find very often that they are talking about things that like, if they had like an, even just the simplest, like understanding of, of like critical race theory um, or even like a like a basic curiosity about um uh, some of the things that are talked about in in that 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 field that like they they would lose so much uh of the steam that like runs the conversations um like when it's all when it's always like like debates about race realism and all this stuff and like like crt is like like First, right off the bat, it's like, well, well, race isn't even this this category that that this, it's not even this biological category that you can like group these characteristics with, it. and and in fact, it it's, makes more sense to just look at this as like how it was imposed on people based on based on having certain like perceived features, um, and and like there's this is, like well documented, you know, like we have legal history um, about like what to do with a black person in America rather than. Uh, you know, and, and like, um, I feel like if people had this context in their minds, it, it, I don't know how they can have a lot of the conversations um, that they do about race, um, because that that context just wait, it, it just makes all of it so it makes it, it makes the picture so clear about like what's happened here. Um, and yeah, so that, that's, I mean, I try to bring it up a lot, honestly. I, I try to talk about it. Um, I, I'm, I, I can probably be frequently quoted as saying, this is why we need CRT in schools and shit like that, um, which I don't necessarily mean that literally, but I, I kind of do. Like, I think we need like a lot of the ideas from it to be mentioned. Yeah, what they, what conservatives, right. you know, constantly refer to as the praxis of it, because, you know, I think initially they were, you know, uh, <clears throat> Obviously, the entire campaign against critical race theory by conservatives is extremely disingenuous from start to finish. I think over mm -hmm. time it became a bit more sophisticated because the left was good at pushing back on, you know, this is a, you know, graduate level legal doctrine. Point out where critical race theory, like, if you've got the proof, show us where are the words critical race theory in elementary and high school curricula. And then, of course, they were like, shit, you know, uh, okay, well, okay, it's not critical race theory yeah. per se. <laughs> it's the praxis of it. Kind of like how, yeah, I guess you could say that, you know, third graders are learning advanced calculus because they're learning basic arithmetic, right? It's, it's just the praxis of advanced calculus that's being taught yeah. to third graders, you know. So they, they move the goalposts constantly, and I think they do it again, and have been continuing to do it with every culture war take that they have. So I guess it's good that you, you've you kind of, you know, staked that particular position, like no matter where the right runs off to now, like however many 
next level culture war uh, narratives they try to spin. I'm going to stand here and guard against the CRT angle because it'll eventually come back around, right? And as you say, 17 states have passed legislation, you know, trying to crack down on this and, and really the implications from it as well. The, you know, the book bans that uh, the Republicans uh, in various states have proposed in the name of trying to refute critical race theory or protect kids from critical race theory. So it certainly has ripple effects. And I think it also, of course, then transitions almost on a spectrum seamlessly into the Republican Party's, uh, you know, uh, fusillade of anti-trans legislation. Well, it's all on a spectrum, right? One thing leads into another. Uh, so it's good that you continue to push back on that because every art, I, I remember having a conversation with a good friend of mine um, who is, he is absolute. he is conservative. Um, I think in some ways he's less conservative than what he was in others. He's probably more right wing than ever, but he's never voted Republican. So he didn't vote for Donald Trump in 2016, but he couldn't bring himself to vote for uh, Secretary Clinton. He um, didn't vote Republican in 2020. Um, but didn't vote for Joe Biden either. But um, I remember briefly he was kind of caught up on the the CRT thing, just low-key and briefly. Like, he wasn't ranting and raving about it, but it was in his YouTube feed a lot. And, you know, he was, he was citing these viral videos of, um, you know, outraged parents and and some more news cody johnson did a really good expose on it where actually a lot of these people are right-wing operatives you know um that they're right-wing talk show radio hosts and and whatnot um but i remember having a conversation with him i was really frustrated i'm like you know look and and cited him an article that was local to the city that we both lived in at the time and i've since moved but you know where there was a backlash against CRT in the the public school system but even like the local publications the local media outlets the reporters thank god asked a very good question okay well you seem very upset about CRT what is critical race theory and none of them could define it and that was the thing that convinced him like oh this is really stupid <laughs> they they're so upset about this but they don't even know what it is and he's like He's in like to computer science, so he's like zeros and ones, zeros and ones, and his his logic. Okay, they can't be rent. They can't have a good reason about being upset about this thing if they don't even know what it is. So he just kind of like crumpled it up and threw it away, and he's never talked about it since. So I was very happy about that. So it's good that you do that because I don't know if you ever get like doom or pilled or whatnot, but I promise you, you are you may only be one or two people, but you are convincing somebody. Along the way, somebody's sharing that video of you against Andrew Wilson and Rob Noor and pointing it out like, hey, actually, the right really doesn't seem to have a grasp of this. CRT is just whatever they want it to be. You know, it's just this blank slate. So it's a good thing you do that. Yeah. And I something else I've been bringing to attention um, is if you look up like if, if you dig into YouTube and you actually find like lectures about CRT, like I'm in this channel right now epoch education it's like just a genuine critical race theory. it's called what is critical race theory really it's tenant one whiteness as property 204 subscribers 204 less than 10k views two years ago zero comments comments are on there's just no comments um and maybe they deleted you know the like bio comments or something but like the more i the more I dig into like channels, like I, I find so many of, of like the, the good faith people actually, or like educational um, outlets that are actually like talking about this thing, and just no, absolutely no ground. Like they're, they're just not getting any traction. Just no one's looking at this stuff. They're looking at the way that it's repackaged, um, it, whether it's by people like on the left or right, um, and. Uh, when I was like going into a lot of debates about it, I, I, I like doing that before I, when I'm prepping for a debate, I'll listen to like a whole bunch of like lectures and stuff. Um, and so I was doing that here and that's why I came across a lot of these channels and stuff. And it just, uh, yeah, it's sad to see because you'll see some, a panel with like four people with, with Christopher Rufo on it. And you know, it's a, uh, it's some huge channel with 
hundreds of thousands of views and, and massive subscriber count. And then just uh, a, a nice, well put together PowerPoint um, presentation where people are, are talking to a crowd um, about what race theory is and like what this like what this entire field of study is trying to do, um, what it means to people, why it exists, uh, why why there's lots of disagreement within the field, um, and and just like really engaging with it, and it's just radio silence. Um, yeah. So so that is it's certainly um, you know I'm listening to you say this, and I'm also thinking about how not only is that true, but it's also it's also additional proof debunking a separate right-wing culture war issue, which is the idea that, you know, conservatives are censured and, uh, or censored rather, and that they're stifled. When in reality, you know, we know that social media companies, their algorithms, either deliberately or just as a sheer cosmic accident, signal boosts right-wing mm-hmm. figures. Um, and you, there's no there's no equivalent of Ben Shapiro in terms of outreach on the left. I mean, you look at um, the Young Turks, they have, I think, like 3 million subscribers or whatnot or something like that. They're in the millions, but it's fewer than mm-hmm. what Ben Shapiro has. Uh, same thing with Twitter followers. Um, you know, David Pakman is incomparable, even though he's at a, over a million. Brian Tyler Cohen. Um, in mm-hmm. terms of, like, the weight classes... Um, the the right is operating in terms of outreach and size and scope uh, on a different scale. Like to to get to a leftist celebrity or thought leader that's higher profile than Ben Shapiro, you have to basically get to like AOC, right? Who is a sitting member of Congress, but she was also able to successfully weaponize her youth and social media savvy so that she, you know, she's the bigger fish there. But in terms, but she's also not a commentator, so. In terms of like right wing commentary, yeah, they tend to dominate the space uh, if in audience size and outreach, if not in arguments and rhetoric. But um, one guy um, I, I'm sure you're familiar with him um, is um, I'm getting used to these. Pic- uh, are you familiar with Sam Hoadley Brill? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually um, one of my first, my I think my first YouTube video that I uploaded. The conversation I had with Hunter Avalone about critical race theory right after he talked to Sam about the same topic. Um, but yeah, I'm familiar with Sam. Yeah, he's he's great. He's great, and I think he's he's very good about making it palatable. But to your point, I mean, I'm sure if we looked at his, you know, YouTube channel, it's probably I, I expect not particularly large. And so I don't know, man. Like that's one of the things. Like that's part of the reason why I stopped streaming for a while. Um, this was very much trial and error for me. Now, I happen to be in a position where I was able to throw some disposable income at it, but, like, I, I'm i still, how do I say this? I think that, I don't want to say that the left has an optics problem, but I, certainly there's a presentational, there's there's this expectation that that we are sticks in the mud and that we are unfun and, you know, that we're not willing to banter and joke and be engaging. I think there are some exceptions there, but... I think if we were able to find a way to make the factual basis of what we have to say more engaging for infotainment, right, Um, we we would stand a better chance. And so to your point, it's not enough to simply be right on the facts or simply have the facts in your favor. You, You know, the facts are irrelevant if you're not able to successfully convey them to mass audiences, right? And there's that great Mark Twain quote, about how a lie travels around the world twice in the time that it takes the truth to tie up or to lace up its shoes, right? So even then, like inherently, we're kind of at a disadvantage in terms of messaging because they don't have to worry about consistency. That's the other thing. Like the right doesn't have to worry about the consistency of message or, you know, adhering to what they said on Monday on Wednesday, right? It's amazing. Um, And so we're operating very asymmetrically. And I think very often we make it even harder for ourselves than, than what it would naturally be. But, uh, but yeah, so I, th- I think it's good that you, you know, you seek, you're doing what um, Governor Newsom is doing from California, where he's like on Truth Social and whatnot, and kind of low-key trolling Trump supporters on Truth Social by like making these videos debunking, you know, right-wing claims about how violence is a 
uh, a blue state problem or a democratic problem when in fact per capita red states are much more violent than blue states yeah. so i mean just like i think it's good to do that and uh i'm trying to get better about that because um and i, and I go back and forth to be i've got i have some former acquaintances who you know were bothered that i don't moderate my rhetoric enough that i i i'm in comments and in chat i'm happy to mock republicans and i say i go on these like tears about how democrats are morally intellectually and perhaps uh, expect sexually superior to republicans they're just better in every way i mean from everything from iq to penis length whatever just on every single way and metric that matters democrats are better than republicans and i like I like mocking the Republican Party and kind of like go throwing elbows and stuff with them. Not hopefully not violating any TOS, but I definitely, I definitely think we got to make it more palatable and, and show that uh, we have the facts and we're also willing to, you know, throw some metaphorical elbows rhetorically. So. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I'm really, really on board with you there. Um, in fact, I mean, a lot of the. A lot of the panels that I've gone on, uh, or maybe the panel that I've most frequently gone on is like, um, is on Cozy, like uh, with Politically Provoked, um, because I, I used to go on their show before they got banned from YouTube. From Politically Twitter. Provoked is banned from YouTube? Is that what, can yeah. you just fact check me on this? Sure. Politically Provoked, is that Andrew and the blonde girl? So it was, yeah, yes, it was. It was Andrew and Brittany, Brittany. once upon a time. Um, and then Andrew, there was a falling out. Andrew left to make Crucible, do his own thing. Um, and Provoke continued doing their thing, but they leaned more and more into like the edgiest uh, far right people they could find to debate. And uh, then they, they did some debate. Um, I think it was with like Lauren Southern and a couple of people, but it was about like about trans women. And I, I don't remember the uh, I don't remember the title, but the, the title alone like got like everyone banned on Twitch. Um, which is, it's kind of, kind of funny, but I mean, obviously like, uh, it wasn't, um, I don't know. It, it was unfortunate. Maybe, maybe not. I, I'm not, I, I'm not really, I'm kind of a mixed minds about that, but anyway, they, they eventually, I don't think that was like their permanent ban. Um, but eventually they did get like permanently banned and now, now it's, it's a much, uh, I, I mean, if you, I don't know if you've seen many streams on cozy, um, Honestly, I've never even heard of it. I've heard of like Rumbler and Truth Social, but I don't even know what Cozy is. Oh, Cozy's uh, Nick Fuentes' platform. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. He has a platform? Um, yeah, Cozy TV. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, not, not, not that I recommend anyone uses it. I don't have an account there. Um, so if you do see a radical coder in, in any Cozy channels, it's not me. Uh, I've had to make that clear several times. Um, wow. Is but, it uh, is it very popular? It's it, it's pretty popular, especially for like griper folks. But but uh, there's a, there's a rumor that they use um, a uh, view multiplier um, on a lot of the the channels. I and, see. And, and Alex Jones has a channel there. Um, uh, so like there's you know and I'm not sure he will for people. very long. He has to pay like a billion dollars in punitive damages, <laughs> so he might not be able to afford the computer on which he he visits. Uh, cozy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Dest Destiny has a channel there. He hasn't streamed on it to his, to his credit for sure. Um, I think he's he's kind of un he's kind of unsure if he ever will. Um, Do you but, follow uh, Destiny yeah. pretty closely? Yeah, I have for for a pretty long time. I think he's, uh, um, I've not seen much by way of Nick Fuentes conversations here lately, so I don't know if they've had a falling out or what. Um, it seems like they're doing less of the, I mean, I think he, I don't know, there was something he, he was just, he was venting about Nick recently, um, gotcha. in a more, in a, in a more like, uh, he, I think he says, he's like, oh, this bridge is probably burned anyway. And so, and he, I think he, I think at one point he even said that, uh, Nick's probably gay or something, which is. The ultimate um, insult to Nick. Yeah. All right. I mean, um, Nick would probably only be more offended if Destiny called him a gay Jewish man. You know, that would probably yeah. be enough to, like, Fuentes' head would explode. Um, 
Yeah, so um, I know I, I'd never heard of this platform, you know, and, and you know, the platforming thing is interesting because obviously I think that you got to use right wing platforming or right wing. You have to engage with right wingers and right wing platforms responsibly. There's no doubt about it. But um, the uh, Eddie Thundercloud says in general, he likes to reserve destiny across any platform, even if he doesn't use it. It's probably pretty smart to do. Um, that's a good idea. Um, but like I, I'm I'm a big fan of Gavin Newsom going on Truth Social and engaging with right wingers and whatnot because you got to go where they are. Bernie Sanders, you know, went uh, repeatedly to Fox News. So does Secretary Buttigieg. Uh, that's responsible. That's smart. If if you are mentally and rhetorically equipped for it, um, and you think you can hold your own and give a the strongest showing possible, you should do it right because it also helps. You know, it probably won't completely evaporate the notion, but it will help reduce the idea that uh, liberals want their safe spaces. When in fact, actually, the 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 tendency to to run to a safe space is as conservative as it was ever liberal or leftist. Right? Conservatives are as likely as anybody to withdraw and cloister amongst themselves. So it's good that you do that, man. Um, yeah. I, I, well, I think to to finish the. I thought I was getting at um, with the politically provoked thing. That, I mean, that's that's where oh, the the problem for me with that content um, is that I, it's it's not really stuff that I can ever put on YouTube um, because it, it'd like, be a TOS violation. Everything. Yeah, like almost everything they say at, at a certain point was just slurs. Um, they're just like screaming at me and, and like they're, they're, there's actually I need to find this video at least. Um, there's one where I was on there for a couple hours and like by the end of it, like Mio and Brittany are like begging people coming on to like stop making everyone look bad which is hilarious i i'm i'm uh, i'm just chilling there you know um although i mean i can get a little arguing with them but um in that case uh it was it was really it was a really bad look um for and, and for me i mean for, for me it was it was great because I'm, I'm watching them and, and people in the audience who were kind of unsure about a lot of that stuff are probably like well wait a minute like you can look very rhetorically strong right now. They're just they're just kind of screaming slurs, um, and none, none of them land. So, what now? <laughs> yeah, I think there's um, something. I think there's something to be said about, <laughs> pun intended, provoking. You know, the opposition. But I also think like I don't know, man. So like when I was younger, you know, I've been debating or arguing with people on the internet uh, as a hobby since middle school, and it was. You know, it, it was very fun. It was a huge time sink. In certain ways, I've gotten less patient. Um, my my energy reserves for engaging with certain types of people um, are much more limited than what they used to be. So I got to budget my sanity and my effort and my energy uh, much more shrewdly than I could when I was 15, 16, you know, screaming at people on message boards. Not just about politics, but who would be who in a Star Wars battle, or would Superman be bad? Like stupid, stupid shit like that, which is really fun. But um, sure. you know, when it comes to right wing figures, it, it takes more out of me to listen to certain types of people now because it's just so frustrating and it seems so performative. Like, uh, like. I don't even like saying this person's name just because it's all, not, not because I think it's like invoking Bloody Mary, but because I know they've they've openly admitted that they they're doing it for attention, which is you know a Hanks and Jackal kind of guy if you know what I'm you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 for sure. I, I don't know if I'd ever want to you know even if I merited his attention in terms of like size, right? I don't know if I'd ever want to engage with that person. Like, I'll say this about Rob Nor. I think Rob Nor and lecture fan genuinely believe what they say. They may say it in the most combatively performative way possible, but I do think that they are genuine conservatives with genuine principles and values. Um, and that's mm -hmm. why I watch, I've watched panels with them and discussions with them. And I think they're very good at what they do. Um, but I... You know, like the the Yankee tanky guy is like a an allegedly left wing example. You know, Dylan Burns has had arguments with him, and so has um, Kevin Logan and Vosh. I would never want to mm -hmm. talk to somebody like that because he's doing exactly what you just said you experienced on the new politically provoked, where he's just at one point he's just kind of screaming incoherently to try to interrupt people, and you know, like 
I don't know. I, I don't know what the, the point of that is. So I guess it's good that some people do it, like Vosh, Dylan Burns, you, you know, because... I did go on a... Um... I went on a panel. Uh, I did modern day debate with uh, with uh, infrared Hawes. Ooh, he's a bit... yeah. See, that's another yeah. one. Yeah. How was that? Yeah. Um, it was it was it was interesting. It, it was, I think it was about um, like uh, man, was it something about what the left is doing in schools or something? But like, um, I I don't remember. I think I was I was going up against him and Lav. I think um lav yeah La lav loon uh, she's been on she's oh been on so was this recent i've just uh, now this, this a month and a half ago and then uh, and then lav and i did another modern day debate against andrew and his wife rachel um which is on my channel so you um, teamed up with with lav loon like so you yeah, so you initially met yeah, his enemies this is like avengers yeah. right so it's iron yeah. man and whoever lav would be and then by the second act, you are uniting against a common foe. It's kind of beautiful when you think about it. Yeah, it was pretty wholesome. Yeah. I'm sorry. So anyway, go ahead. So you had a conversation with with, ha with Haas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I honestly, I really don't remember much, many specifics from it. Um, because it was such a blur think, of excitement and joy? Yeah, that's probably it. I, I think I think, um, I think Haas is just such a such an over-the-top personality that like it was easy for for the people on the panel to just kind of like bully him and laugh at him a little bit and i was you know i i actually like looking back or i used i used to really like haas before he he went too far off the deep end because i think he has a, he actually has like a really strong like philosophical and historical background um so when he talks about like or when he used to talk about like fascism and stuff, he would. He, it was a very academic perspective that I, I was I was really intrigued by because I, I had researched a lot of stuff like before I started listening to him talk about it, um, and I was like, oh, this guy actually knows like knows what he's saying. And then I felt like there was a weird moment. Well, maybe it wasn't a moment. It was maybe over time that he kind of took on this. Uh, Maybe he always was, uh, whatever whatever it is, Haas is. Yeah, he's um, certainly. I mean, I'm not. I'm not super experienced with him. I've I've seen him on. Now I'm now I'm starting to gaslight myself. I thought I've seen him on. Did he ever do hippy dippy panels? He did. I think okay. He did. Okay. Um, uh, we're gonna go with that one. I want to say that's where I saw him. I've seen him argue with Vosh a couple of times with Destiny a couple of times. So I'm gonna say I probably have seen or experienced maybe five or six conversations or debates with him um he's certainly not stupid he's very well spoken yeah. he seems very educated on matters of foreign policy and you know eastern europe and you know western asia um but it seems to me that he's become a grifter and it's performative now and i just i don't know man like so i'm saying so i almost sound like a i don't want to say a hypocrite now but almost like i'm i'm having two contradictory viewpoints because i said earlier it's important for us to be compelling infotainers right you can't just be a dry lecturer and and expect to make it anywhere in this day and age with an attention span this stunted in this you know public and, and i'm i'm one of them you know you got you got to deliver it entertainingly but i guess i think it's important to say what you mean and mean what you say say it entertainingly like however you want to package it but the sentiment behind it i really believe you should sincerely believe i don't think that um i don't think it's in anybody's benefit unless they know like you tell them hey look radical for the sake of conversation since we're two leftists i'm just going to play the devil's advocate here just to test your arguments i want you to know i don't sincerely like if you do something like that and then you play the contrarian to kind of tease a discussion out that's fine but yeah. i think it's dangerous in these divisive times with the stakes so high to say things that you don't mean that are simply incendiary that's my my belief um yeah I, I would agree with that so that's why i don't like um some of these people in terms of their advocacy and in terms like would i ever engage with them no probably not i have an easier time dealing with somebody who might be crazy or whatever the term is but they sincerely believe the things they say or i believe they sincerely believe the things they say than a very slick contrarian Who's just doing it for attention so yeah fair enough and yeah i, I definitely agree it can be it's 
much more frustrating to have those conversations because uh, it feels like uh, like climbing up a slippery wall. Um, How are your energy reserves when you have these conversations on like the crucible and politically cr- provoked mm-hmm. and on cozy? Is it taxing for you? Do you have to like recharge afterwards or are you like an energizer bunny when it comes to conflict? Um, generally, I'm energizer bunny. Um, like for the most part. So I've been before before I started doing like like panels and stuff and and like getting into all these more like weird spaces. I, I was already on Facebook for years. I was in like a bunch of weird groups. Like uh, there was this one like we live in a society and a bunch of other like right leaning or explicitly right wing groups. Um, uh, that I and I would I would I would be I would always be like shit posting and and just kind of picking fights with everyone there. Because a lot of them were like circle jerks, and and so I, I just kind of um, like I I kind of like giga chat and say like the, the SJW position, and and be like well actually you know like this is here's here's the the progressive narrative but um uh but like a little bit quippy um and and a lot of people like uh I, they would kind of bully me a little bit uh but eventually even like a lot of the admins would um would start to defend me <laughs> in these groups. Um, just cause I, I think I just made it more interesting. Sure. Um, you think maybe you, you think maybe you earned their respect or changed any of their yeah, minds? Absolutely. I, I'm still, I'm still on, uh, yeah, that, that rarely, uh, I mean, you know, once in a while there, there'd be a comment where it's like, okay, fair enough. I see where you're coming from, Ryan. Like, um, and, uh, and I would like screenshot that and be like, save it and like post on my Facebook. Like, look, this is why I do this. It shit. can be done. It um, can be done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also even like the, some of the admins I'm, I, I, I'm like friends with still, um, and, uh, it's, you know, a, a lot of them, I, a lot of those people who were even the ones who are defending me are still people that I would kind of consider like reprehensible, um, frankly, but it, it's nice to, to have somebody in from that perspective. Um, because I, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of scared of, of what that perspective can do. So, um, it's, it's good to have like some talons in there. You know what I mean? Sure. No, no, no. I mean, like, so I don't know your background, but did you, okay, let's start with you personally. Did you ever go through a right wing or conservative phase? Not particularly conservative. My, my parents are conservative. Um, so I grew up like with conservatism around me. Um, but it, it wasn't like, it wasn't like heavily politicized, I guess. Uh, It wasn't like in my face. Um, at least not that I, that I recognized. Um, and so when I, when I got into politics, I was like, I, I, I had a weird phase where I think like, I, I remember like someone trying to like, like one of my friends was, was asking, was telling me to like use they, them pronouns for another one of our, our friends. And I was like, what the what are you talking about? That's crazy. I'm not going to do that. And I was like, and then look, like I look back on it now I have like, I have like, I'm like Ryan, he, they in my bio and shit. Like, um, and so, you know, I, I maybe I had like a slightly fringe. I was never like conservative in the way I imagine a conservative now. Um, I never like sincerely held like that had conservative values. Like I've been like pretty liberal in terms of thinking about like people's sexuality and having like gay friends around me. Um, and like uh, I, I've always I've, I've always been around like a pretty diverse cast of people in my life. So um, like it it would have been hard to like sell me on like, like really, I'm sure that I said a bunch of cringy, like, 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 oh my God, if what happened to that girl with, with the, um, with the college thing, like, like, thank God, like that, that, uh, that, that, yeah, that, that people hadn't recorded you. Sure. Yeah. Like I, 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 I didn't, I didn't know, I, you know, I, I look back at it and I'm like, I, this guy had no idea. This guy who was saying like, like, or like joking about this with his friends, even in like Facebook comment threads, and, uh, it, it might might still come back and bite me. Like, um, like I, I was just I would just be edgy, and like I thought it was being irreverent, you know. Sure. Um, and and so I, I sympathize with that still um, when I, I see people who are, I know they're just they just doing it, they think it's edgy, um, but uh, I kind of I think I kind of went off on the. No, no, I mean, you answered it. I mean, so, like, so you you were probably what they call, um, you probably went through that phase, what they call it, the dirtbag left or whatever, where you were willing to be edgy and, and irreverent, um, but, like, your, your principles and your values were anti-conservative. You, you know, you had an inclusive sense of moral values and social policies and 
probably yeah. supported economic policies, which, you know, uh, uplifted the poor and everything. So like, yeah, I mean, and, and I can relate. So yeah, I also have an irreverent sense of humor. There's pretty much nothing that you could joke about to me that would offend me. Um, now, obviously, on stream, right, you got to you gotta be mindful of TOS, as I'm sure you have to. Um, and when I was younger, I was much more cavalier with my words. Um, and I love banter, and I love sarcasm, and I love flirting, and I love all these things. Like, wordplay is very, very important to me uh, in my personal life, my social life, and even my professional life. And knock on wood, I have not suffered consequences from that either. But it's possible. I hope I don't. And I definitely agree that it's important for the right and left to be as circumspect as possible. You know, like the people who troll through old threads, you know, whatnot, 10-year tw old tweets from James Young or Kevin Hart or whatnot. Like, I get it. I understand why there is backlash when people do that. Because it does seem like it's just motivated out of spite at this point. You're, you know, to me, it's important that, like, like even, you know, jokes and sense of humor. Like, I, I don't watch, like, I, I love comedies, uh, TV shows and, and movies. And the things I watch aren't completely sanitized. Like, they're pretty offensive. They can be, like, always sunny and, you know, family guy and, and stuff like that. I mean, you know, things that a lot of people would consider, you know, I shouldn't say that a lot of people, that there are some people who would consider very toxic and very offensive. And I do mm. cut, I'm like kind of like you. I mean, I, I do cut humor and humorists and comedians. I mean, I do give them rope that I wouldn't, you know, a politician, right? They can be freer with their words. Um, but yeah, I never went through a, a right-wing phase. Now, I did go through a, a disaffected leftist contrarian phase for about three or four years. Um did you ever go through a phase like that where you were hyper focused on complaining or criticizing about the left, even though you identified with the left in terms of your values and your policies? Not, not really yet. Um, and I, I think part of that for me is uh, I, when I, when I see like, there's stuff on the left that makes me like cringe really hard. Um, but when I go into like, right wing spaces, I, I get like genuinely afraid. Um, and like I mentioned, you, when you're, I think you asked me about like the emotional toll. When yeah, I go in and like somebody and, and there was a specific, specifically one panel where I it was a Saturday night pop on that, that politically provoked does. But this particular day was the day of the Buffalo massacre. And I I, I'd been appearing on already on their, their panels for a while. And I just, when, when the manifesto like popped online and quotes from and stuff started cycling around, I was like, Oh, look, it's all the stuff that you guys are saying every fucking night on your show. Like these are all the memes. These are all the jokes. These are all the ideas like we, and they're all like packaged here with with this guy who just like drove to the densest the, the blackest zip code he could think of and uh he th 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 there's a clip of him like accidentally aiming at a white guy saying sorry and then going to continue to to mow down more black people and, it, and that going on that panel that night to then to then still have those same talking points being parroted back at me um watching uh, uh kai clips come on and tell and talk about how it was a fed up um and, and just be just being generally gaslit um it, it that that one like like just just i i was so mad and and so 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 like i i don't know i, I was just shook you know um and and i think there was like a 17 year old kid on that panel as well who was like talking about how he's been rat he's like been a white nationalist since he was like 15 and shit and i'm like dude this is this is what just happened to with, with this guy they went and did this like i i i felt like i was crazy you know because like everyone like people are are not being you know it's not a, exactly a, a very welcoming space for for empathy and, and recognizing like why people would be afraid of this stuff which is you know what i try to talk about there a lot like why people are scared of them um 
especially now if I if I pop on there, it's it's usually like, hey, you guys know why why, why people call you Nazis, right? It's because you do stuff like like you know X Y Z, um, like whether or not I think you are, um, is a, you know a different question, but like uh, you've got to see like why people would be afraid of you, um, and yeah, so so that that particular event definitely that one shook me more than most. Um, Usually I, I have no problem. I'm like I could do this all day, Captain America, you know. <laughs> um, but but yeah, that, that was one that still I, I still think about that. Yeah, obviously. Um, That's good that you didn't go through a disaffected leftist uh, contrarian phase, and and I hope that uh, you never do because um, it was so. Like I look back on it, and I just man, I cringe at. Um, there's this idea I think that. And I think it's more common on the left and the right, certainly in modern times, that um, to be intellectually honest, we need to be, we need to constantly test our side and we need to check our side. And I do think to an extent that's true, right? You always need to keep an eye on your the excesses of your peers. You need to hold yourself accountable, your peers accountable, your opposition accountable. Um, but you also need to, it needs to be staggered, right? It needs to be proportionate to the degree that they need to be held, Um in check and right now to your point um rhetorically in terms of actions the right wing is just objectively worse by far on pretty much every metric than the left right and so like you said there there are things about the left that probably make you cringe um you know some of the virtue signaling or clumsy attempts by politicians to virtue signal and and again like stories like the new york times thing where this person, you know, this this young person reacted vindictively to another young person. And to one extent or another, these things are bad. Or even, like, even, you know, the, the 2017 or 2018 shooting of Steve Scalise by a an alleged Bernie Sanders supporter. That, you know, that affected real harm. People were shot. Um, yeah. All these things deserve scrutiny and condemnation you know, when and where appropriate. But there's this sense of, I think the left is uniquely vulnerable to a degree of enlightened centrism that the right isn't, right? So like the right, Charlie Kirk isn't an enlightened centrist. Ben Shapiro isn't an enlightened centrist. They are openly partisan and encourage their supporters to be openly partisan. Um, You know, when the story broke about Herschel Walker you know, with pretty compelling evidence paying for um, his mistress to have an abortion, uh, Dana Loesch, the former NRA spokeswoman who is a right-wing podcaster and, and commentator, I think, for Blaze TV or something like that, Glenn Beck's channel, she was like, does this change anything? Nope. She goes, I want to win. And, like, she just, like, openly said that, and I don't respect it, but I, I wish we saw a bit more of that attitude on the left, given that that's the prevailing attitude on the right. And we can't lose sight of that. You know, you can't give the cringe that you see on from elements of the left. You can't give it equal weight to the absolutely toxic danger that you see on the right just out of some weird reflexive sense of equilibrium. Okay, this is really heavy. Ergo, I must weigh this thing really we can't do that and i think we are so uniquely prone uh on the left to do that and uh moderates and centrists to do that too you know the the complaints for example i mean you think about since president biden's been in office and you know when he gave that speech a couple of months ago in um in front of independence hall in philadelphia about where he called out MAGA republicans and not just conservative media but elements of mainstream media treated it like this was it was this apocalyptic semi-fascist speech when in fact it just it wasn't it was a long overdue blunt speech from the president and in it he went out of his way to in fact a matter of fact i think you could argue he gave the republican party much more credit than it deserved by trying to frame it as ah, well it's not even the republican party the majority of the republican party it's just a very vocal very influential fringe that's not true, but yeah. I think he was giving them more credit than what. Yeah. yeah. yeah I know and so it's just, it's really frustrating because then it's like, oh, this is so divisive from or divisive from the president. I'm thinking Trump said stuff like that 
without the qualifiers like three times a week. What? So why is it Biden doing it once is equal to six months of Trump doing it three times a week? Why is that? And I, I, I don't know. I feel like we have to aggressively, aggressively push back on that. Like this is, your, the way I tell my friends is when you give these things equal weight or comparable weight, or you focus more on what the left is doing than the right, you're stepping over a dollar for the sake of a penny. You are. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we've got to not do that. And we have to like try to, that's why that, that is speaking of destiny. That's kind of like my pet project with him. It's just to constantly like to whatever extent I can just kind of like, Hey buddy, this isn't a 50, 50 thing. This isn't a both sides thing. This is, this is like, the left doing this thing that annoys you just a wee little bit, and then the right actually does it all the fucking time, and you can't, you can't like split your focus on that. You, you, it's, it's, you're a doctor in the ER, your patient's coming in, they've got a pipe through the chest, you can't be focusing on the splinter. You got to triage. And we definitely need influential content creators to keep that perspective, you know? Yes. And, and on, on what you just said, and I, I've actually been uh, thinking about this for a while. And I'm glad that we, this kind of hits on a lot of things that we've talked about tonight. But, but, but Destiny, one of the things that he's, you, you've probably heard him mention this before. Um, have you heard him mention the CRT math book? He mentioned it, I think, the other day. Yeah. He might, yeah, he might, he might even say, yeah, I know. He, I think he just said it on the Change My Mind thing. Okay. So this book, it's just, it's just like a, um, it's like a critical race theory inspire. It's like, like equity in public math education or something is what it's called. Um, but every time Destiny talks about it, he describes how this there's this dumb critical race theory book that says that black kids have to run around the school to learn math. And I've looked over this book. And I, I, by the way, I'm, I'm an educator, math and computer science educator specifically. Um, and I also have students of color. Um, so these are things that I, I look at, you know, stuff like this and I think it's interesting, but when I read it, it's not, it's not like, like, oh, the black kids need to run around. There's like one bullet point that's separate from the other bullet points that says like incorporating movement into learning, which is good for all people. And the book's not about like only teaching, um, you know, only teaching black students math. Um, it's just about way like techniques that can broaden and individualize math education more um and it's really really frustrating the way he's represented this and i i I am a big destiny fan and i've listened to him talk about this particular thing um several times over the last year or two and uh i've um yeah it's been it's been like a trigger for me at this point um i'm like oh please don't fuck in that book again um so you know there's there's a, a bit of a wedge uh to dive in there if if you i'm sure you'll probably talk to him again before before i get the chance um so yeah, yeah if it, if a, and when i ever talk with him again i'll uh i'll try to bring that up and and it's you know i um it's funny because he i think his chat asked me once while he was he was grabbing like something to eat or heating something up in his microwave um i think the subject came up of why i like vosh because i still i still really like vosh and my answer is that I, as far as part of a well-balanced leftist diet on social media, um, one's fruit and the other one's vegetables. Like Vosh and Destiny, one of the things that, you know, I was, I was introduced to the space very, very late, like during the pandemic. Um, some online acquaintances of mine introduced me to the space because prior to that and and really even to this day i'm still relatively normie like i i I have a new york times subscription a wapo subscription i read axios a lot just because it's just very concise and digestible um Mm -hmm. i still watch chris wallace and i liked chris cuomo before the stuff went on with his brother um but i loved that he was a hard-hitting journalist in terms of he was very combative great interviews with ted cruz and matt schlapp and others and I watch a lot of C-SPAN. Like, I'm, I'm kind of a policy wonk and a geek for that stuff. And so that, that means you get a lot of it from normie sources. And I've, I've read a lot of books and, and stuff like that. So anyway, um, as part of a well-balanced 
you know, Twitcho, YouTube, whatever we're calling this joint space diet, I think Destiny and Vosh give give two different things. And I think that was part of the reason why they were so formidable in tag teams. Like I, I remember that classic, I'm sure you've seen it, debate against uh Eric Stryker and Allsup, and it was just brutal. Um because again, like to use the Avengers metaphor, it was like Thor and Iron Man or Captain America and Iron Man or whatever. I mean like they they fought so well together and each one like they were they they obviously had common interests common values a common education but the way they approached it was a bit different i think that destiny is the more he's like he's more like spock in the sense that he's not nearly as unemotional as he often presents himself right he's he's prone to hyperbole and rage as much as anybody else but i like the fact that he doesn't give hot takes i really like that because vosh went through a phase certainly in 2020 2021 of giving really bad hot takes that were contradicted subsequently by additional facts and Vosh has thank god has gotten away from that but one thing that Vosh does well that i don't think destiny does anymore is Vosh can is Vosh has a keener understanding of the stakes and perspective so mm -hmm. you know destiny is probably the superior logician but in terms of who I would want, like, pointing destiny at things and saying, you know, attack, it would be Vosh because Vosh recognizes that the current sociopolitical climate is not a both sides thing. You know, yeah. he was talking about it today where, you know, like there's an intercept story about how apparently the Department of Homeland Security was looking into ways about policing disinformation and, and certain documents were leaked. Um and Vosh was covering it a bit, and I, I only heard a little bit, but he kept pointing out that, look, it's not that I want the government to have this authority or that I trust them with it. And he said, but I'm so sick and tired of, you know, notions of disinformation and censorship and whatever that are focused on the left and the, and the government. Look at what the right constantly does with its disinformation machine. And we're, you know, we're when you combine that with the fact that, you know, the majority of GOP candidates who are that are running in this election cycle are avowed de election deniers. And, you know, they control 38 out of 50 state legislatures. And we've got the independent state legislature doctrine, which is going to be litigated in front of the Supreme Court, which if the conservative Supreme Court rules in their favor, will allow these red states to decouple their election maps from the state constitution without judicial overview so they they can they could write whatever they want like you think about just all these things all these things all these things and it's like yeah. i'm sorry like there's no rational basis to say i mean that that was that was the key complaint of several of my conversations with destiny I'm like dude when you're like this is you know the left is just about it i'm like no dude like not even like like the it's magnitude, it's orders of magnitude apart. It's not remotely close. There's no sane scenario. It's not, it's not like this. It's just, it's night and day, I'm sorry. And, and I know it sounds like so cartoonish and black and white, like, oh, one's the white hats and the other one's the black hats. Mm -hmm. But it kind of is at this point. I mean, and we've been through periods like that in, in history, like the Civil War. I mean... President Lincoln is lionized now, but he did some shady stuff during the Civil War to win, like suspending the writ of habeas corpus and doing all, imprisoning, like ignoring Supreme Court decisions and federal court decisions. That's why a lot of critics of Lincoln at the time called him a tyrant. Um, you know, uh, President Roosevelt during the Second World War, he imprisoned, you know, hundreds of thousands of Japanese Americans in California. Like, like, even in the most black and white situations throughout history, there is some degree of gray, no doubt. But we consider the Second World War to be a tale of good versus evil, right? It's the Allies versus the Axis. One is good or as close to good as can be reasonably expected, and the other is pure evil. Same thing for the Civil War. So it shouldn't be that foreign to politically conscious americans like yeah the left does make mistakes democrats do screw up there are some moral failures nancy pelosi seems to be fond of insider trading and shit like that but it's i'm sorry it's just night and day difference and i feel like vosh knows that 
and Vosh has his eyes on the prize, and I think Destiny, either because of personal stuff he's experienced from the online left, or whatever, or because it's a long con to try to get more conservatives to be amenable to the to the to the left through him, because I still think he's a leftist. I do. I don't believe he's conservative. I, I sit, people can say what they want, but I don't think he's a right winger. He's definitely a genuine. Yeah. Like, there's, there's, yeah. But I do think that his perspective on the stakes and the consequences and keeping things proportionate, I don't think it's as good as Vosh. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. As someone who's watched both of them, I mean, as long as, at least until probably around the time that you described Vosh, uh, a, a lot of his mishaps, um, I, I watched him pretty regularly, like, since he started up until around that point, and I've been watching Destiny since, like, 2017, maybe? Oh, wow. Um, You're an yeah, OG yeah, fan, I mean, or at least, like, at least a an earlier generation of Destiny fan. Definitely. I was, um, I, w- I was very intrigued by the... Um, I mean, he, he was hopping on there and having all these conversations with these like these crazy right wing people, and uh, and I found myself like really enjoying doing that as well. Um, and so I, I felt like I learned a lot from like watching him engage with these people, learning the arguments that they would bring up, learning how he approached them, um, and and just being entertained. I just I just genuinely like him. Also, um, although you know I, he frustrates me, but uh, like. But who um, doesn't? I mean, like that's that's yeah. why. <laughs> That's why, like, I, yeah, you know, exactly. I've got some friends, I'm sure, I'm sure you feel this way, too. I, I've got some friends who are also, like, pay attention to the space, who kind of get on my ass, who, you know, they're like, you know, I, I can't believe that, you know, you're friendly with him and, and that you seem to have faith in him. But I, I just genuinely believe, I mean, it's possible that he's so manipulative and, and ingenious that he's pulling, again, a, a con on everybody there. But I, I do believe he is still you know, a leftist, uh, certainly not as left as other people want. And he's probably less left in some ways than he was three years ago, but mm-hmm. I, he'll never vote for a Republican. And to me, at the end of the day, that's the single most important thing in this political context is to be anti GOP. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Liz Cheney. I'm not, I think that, uh, uh I think that like s- some people are very quick to lionize Liz Cheney because she's a member of the January 6th committee and, you know, she spoke out against President Trump. And those are great. That's important. But people who are late to the game on Trump, who are Washington insiders, who work in the Beltway, I have a lot of contempt for them because it's like, I can't believe you didn't see this coming. You know, Donald Trump is many things, but, you know, dissembling, like he's not, you, you a Star Wars fan? Um, Not a huge one, but I'm very familiar with He's not Emperor Palpatine. He's not pretending to be one thing when he's in fact another. He's just kind of openly this narcissistic authoritarian dipshit and has been for years. And so this idea like, oh my God, I never realized that this guy would do the things that everybody knew he was going to do if you were paying attention. Like to me, it's like, okay, Liz, I appreciate it. But you're not redeemed. Your redemption story is just beginning. Now you need to bend over backwards to get every Democrat elected. And she seems to be. She's like openly endorsing uh, one Democrat after another. That's good. Your party has no place in politics in holding the levers of power. You, mm-hmm. you, If you are truly looking to redeem yourself, and it's genuine, now that you've established that this is the party of Donald Trump, you owe it to your constituents and the Constitution and really your own vision of conservatism to basically do everything in your power to keep Republicans out of power, get them out. Not just Trump, but mm-hmm. he's infected the entire body of the GOP leadership. So until they viciously recant him, you have an obligation to make every word that comes out of your mouth. Don't say shit about Biden. I don't want to hear your complaints about Biden, Liz Cheney. You may have them, but you need to be focused 100% on cleaning up the mess that you helped create. That's how I want people um, to treat the GOP and, and this. Like, we just don't have time for anything else. And I, I like that uh, people like Vosh um, uh, kind of have that perspective. And I, and I think Destiny will eventually get back to it. Um, and I'm going to mm-hmm. do my small part in trying to, like, 
nudge him in that way. Um, I will, I'll try to I'll try to do that as well. I, I think I'm I think I'm I'm getting close to um, to, to bumping heads uh, eventually. I, I'm I'm now like so I'm like orbiting. I've orbited a lot of Destiny orbiters at this point, um, and I've emailed him before, so he, he he's at least aware of my existence. Um, so we'll see what happens. That's good. And I mean, like, um, uh, I, my buddy Stax, who, who talked to him, I, I, uh, I told, I asked Destiny if he would talk to him, um, uh, whatever, whenever I can, I'll name drop you as well to whatever extent that, that that carries favor. But you mentioned mm-hmm. Hunter Avalone. Um, I like Hunter too. Um, I don't know where you, you just mentioned him that you, you know, I had a conversation oh, with yeah. him, but, um, yeah, I had, um, I had, uh, I think a long time ago, um, for whatever reason, maybe it was just, I, was, I don't, I don't know what I was tweeting about, but, um, uh, I think his, his wife, Carissa had like noticed me on Twitter and followed me. And, um, so she'd been aware of me. And then when Hunter was, I mentioned he was having that conversation, he was trying to learn about like critical race theory. Um, and he had a conversation with Sam Hodley, Bro, Hodley bro. Um, to be and, clear though, this uh, was and, after, this was after he abandoned the right, right. He was trying yes, to educate himself. Definitely. Okay, yeah, for the yeah, left. Yeah, Go a, ahead. This was, yeah, he, he was here. And I think that, that process is, was like a, a lot, a long time, uh, as I understand it. Um, but uh, anyway, anyway, um, yeah, so they, they had had a conversation, and then Carissa asked me to come on, um, and I did. And then uh, and then Hunter followed me. At my Twitter account, I have all these really cool followers. Like, I only have like 300 followers, but there are like, like a, I don't know, a, a tenth of them are like these, these pretty big names. Um, and so it's very frustrating that I'm locked out of that account right now. Um, but anyway, that was how I uh, became associated with Hunter. And I think he's a good guy. I really like, um, I, I appreciated his, uh, like the way that he came to a lot of his positions, um, realizing how stupid a lot of the things he used to say was were. And he would, he, he was doing videos, like actually like breaking down his own yeah hunter versus hunter hunter debunks hunter and all that yeah yeah i I didn't really watch the content but i was really happy to see that he was doing that content um because i mean that's like 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 you said about liz cheney like that that, that's like the kind of thing that i i want to see from someone who's like genuinely regretful of like what they've been contributing to Um, 100 percent. that's that's a great example like i have infinitely more respect for Hunter Avalone than I do somebody like Liz Cheney, although my respect for her is slowly increasing the more she openly endorses Democrats. Because what Hunter did was took a, he took a principled stance. I mean, this was a guy you look at his YouTube subscriptions, like they're you know he nearly six hundred thousand. I think he still is. So he was clearly doing very well for himself as a conservative mouthpiece. And what he did took profound courage. Because it wasn't just that he was contradicting, you know, a vocifer, a vocifer, excuse me, a vociferously violent and vindictive right wing, but also it was against his financial interests as well. Because as we talked about, it seems like if you want to make it big in content creation on the politics side, it'd probably be in your best interest to be a salacious right winger, right? Like that'd be the way to, to get the most attention, shock and awe. So what he did was it was against his own financial interests, and it wasn't just brief. He has continued to relentlessly, you know, walk this road of redemption, and not just on an apology tour, but also leveraging his gifts, his talent, because I think he's very talented, and I love how combative he is. I don't want everybody on the left to be as combative as Hunter, but I'm glad he's in the roster. I'm glad we have such a range. We've got super polite chill people and then we've got people like hunter and and destiny and vosh you know who can especially hunter i think who is more prone to be as uh, confrontational than any of them i love that because it's not just that he's apologizing he is leveraging his aggression for the left on behalf of the left i love that um yeah so i have a lot of respect for him yeah i i empathize with him doing that um I, I, again, I'm describing my, I, I, I'm generally, I mean, it, it, when you're in enough of those spaces, enough of those panels, like it's hard not to get like riled up and be screaming at people, but also I have fun doing it. Uh, I, did, I actually did uh, uh, a modern day debate with uh, with Hunter Avalone against like Nick Fuentes. Um, Dude. And uh, uh, a few other people. That's a big um, deal. Which, which, 
my name on Kiwi Farms. So that was that was a that's the only, I think that's the only time that they got they put me on Kiwi Farms. And for now, you, so, the subject uh, was Kiwi Farms, or you? No, no, no. Um, uh, the subject was. I don't know what they talked about there. It's I, I, last time I went on that channel, I challenged James to a debate about whether or not modern day debate is a neutral platform. Um, James is the host, right? The guy with the glasses, yeah. big buff guy. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, I don't know what the panel was on, um, but the hunter was, hunter was just hunter was just screaming at Nick the whole time, and it was kind of you know hard to get a word in. But I I, I appreciated him, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It, there were too many elbows flying. I couldn't see anything. Well, and so that's the other thing too. Like, I mean, I'm I'm cool with I don't. One of the things I've said for years in my before I long before I got in this space when I was like again debating politics via text like like the written word either on message boards or whatnot or discord servers or if I was talking you know pop culture like having Star Wars debates or whatever whatever it was whatever the subject was as so I've gotten older I do I do reserve the right to match energy like to to a call match and mirror like I might not avail myself of that right, but if, if I'll, I'll generally speaking, I will let you set the tone and then whether or not I choose to match you is entirely up to me at that point. And I may choose to stay civil when you get heated, or I may avail myself of the right to get heated when you get heated, but I do, I do reserve that right. And I think it's important that everybody remember on the left, especially that they do have the right to respond in kind to at least some extent or another. But I also think there's a degree of prudence that has to, to, to be associated with it. Right. So like if you're dealing with a bad faith actor or somebody who's hypocrisy trolling, um, and I get, I'm thinking of somebody like Rob Nor in the sense that he does offer bad faith arguments. So like you, you see it all the time. He'll never, he'll never say, you know, it's always a, what about ism always, always a, what about ism. I reserve the right to just trade what about isms too. Like, we could just go in an infinite circle. Well, no, I want you to answer my question. No, I'm not going to answer your question until you answer mine. It, it can't be. It's got to be reciprocal. I reserve the right to do that. But you also, I think, have to... There's also, I think, a... It's good that the left can demonstrate poise and calm because I think that also suggests strength. So it's like a judgment call every time, right? Sometimes it's probably in your best interest to project strength by either bantering back or hum verbally humiliating, dunking, getting him in a gotcha. And I think other times, like, it's to show absolute indifference to the person you're talking to. Like when somebody like the Yankee Tanky or maybe somebody like Haas who are just screaming, blowing through their mics, you know what I mean? Just like they're they're just completely rupturing their microphones mm -hmm. that it's just kind of calmed. Great example. Perfect example. Just chef's kiss. I can't remember what it was, but do you remember when it was Destiny? I think it was Destiny and Dylan versus Haas and somebody, but like Jackson or Haxon was there um, in the back, and neither of them reacted. Like they tried to pull the Sam Cedar moment with Steven Crowder, you know, like, yeah. hey, guess who's here? And they just didn't react. What's that? Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, just completely robbing him of that moment. Genius. Mm -hmm. That's how, that was a good instinct to not. <gasps> to not freak out or to get uh, to pissy about those things, but to, uh, to yeah. take the opposite approach. Yeah, my, um, my recent debate uh, with... Uh... Andrew on modern day debate a lot of the feedback that I saw even from like people who were calling me a beta soy whatever um like they were still like uh complaining that Andrew came off so so aggressive and and like frustratingly so and not like like me and Lab were just I don't know like we were we were both very calm like and pretty consistent in the things we were like like getting at um and it just it just wasn't a good look for Andrew, to to be honest. Um, I mean, not that, <laughs> you know, for what that's worth. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I I feel what you're describing, um, and yeah, I, I I agree with the the tactfully 
dispensing um, uh, whichever is, is maybe like have, having a, a diverse set of tools that, that you can work with. Yeah, um, you don't always need I, to be a hammer and you don't always need to be a scalpel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Do you, in terms of, um, you know, again, obviously critical race theory and all its implications, but in terms of things that you're most passionate about with respect to sociopolitics, um, what else are like, what are, what's, what's very, what is important to you in terms of like, will you debate anything uh, at any time with anybody or are there like particular soap boxes that you really want to emphasize? So I think, I think critical race theory is a big one for me um, because I think most of the conversations I see about it are so, so terrible um, and like infuriating to me, honestly. So, so that, that's one that I just, I just continue to come back to. Um, and it seems like one that there's a lot of political pressure, even though it's, it's maybe on the back burner. Um, I think that there's enough that people are still going like board meetings, you know? Um, but also, I mean, I mean, I think, uh, a theme of my, my debates is like, like race and gender and all this stuff, uh, in part, be, I guess, like that those things for most of my life didn't really mean much to me. Um, like I, I, I always kind of, I just, you know, like, like, why would I, why would I care? Like what is race and gender to, uh, just a, a average white dude? Um, for most of your life. I mean, I guess now when it's more in the public eye, people are like, oh yeah, well, white people are the, um, uh, you know, everyone thinks that, everyone thinks that the left thing like paints white people as the devil or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm well equipped to have those stations, but also I really, I really care about like, education. I mean, I mentioned I'm an educator. Um, like I, I want to see uh, better, <laughs> education across the board more individualized education um I, I like i like just talking about what's going on honestly um like just current events and shooting the shit i like video games like i've, I've got a pretty like wide diverse um like a uh, plethora of interests right so um, well the reason i ask is i mean well there are a couple of reasons number one i am genuinely interested because i mean you and i've chit chatted through twitter dms and discord dms mm -hmm. but we've never like had a chance to really interact in in like yeah, a prolonged I you me on my phone. yeah no and likewise because like i said this is just kind of like an impromptu bs just stream set up and i needed to see how it would work with other people but i think we have a pretty good dynamic and uh it, it's been an easy conversation but my mind there again not to not to I'd like to go for like full mcu because this is like the seventh time i've used a metaphor I but i always so. like to think no, I'm a big fan, so. i like to think about the roster you know what i mean like because here's the reality. I mean, nobody, you know, I try to be as educated on a topic as possible. Um, I, and, and, but politics, you know, it's the single broadest and most fast paced, um, you know, area of knowledge, right? Because current events are constantly updating and new developments. And you, you, you so not just domestically, but globally, but in, even domestically, it's so stratified. You've got, you know, federal domestic politics, you've got your state domestic politics, the domestic politics of other states, local politics. I mean, it's just, it's so complex, so vast. And there's so many biases and perceptions. And you also have a, I mean, I have a full-time job. You have a full-time, like, so it's like all these things that nobody is a policy wonk on all things. And so like I, for example, um, have relatively little interest and therefore very relatively little expertise on issues about race. And I know like like I've unfortunately there there I have again former acquaintances and people who I'm still acquainted with who are you know liberal um, who don't vote and wouldn't vote Republican but like they are just obsessed with IQ and you know you, uh, Sam Harris and you know whether or not there's you know disparities or average disparities in IQ between genders and races and what can be done about it and i'm not equipped for a lot of those conversations because i don't want to say it's kind of like icky to me kind of like because i feel like you can't i feel like you can't throw a stick you know i i, I remember when ezra klein from vox had that conversation with sam harris like three or four years ago because sam harris had that conversation which i know you know what i'm talking about 
And I remember at the time being kind of on Sam Harris's side, like, yeah, why can't we talk about these things and whatnot? And as, a, as I've gotten a little older, you know, I have since kind of swung back around to Ezra Klein, where it's like, you can have these conversations, but they need to be thoughtful. They need to not be done lightly, you know, they're, and, and so it's just, but you can't, seems like you can't throw a stick in that you know, mill you without hitting a Nazi (laughs) or, and it's just like, I just can't, like, I'm, I get so agitated. And the last thing I want to do is be dunked on by a Nazi and give them more fodder. So Mm -hmm. now I'm thinking, okay, if the time comes that, you know, because Stax and I are going to do a regular collaboration and I may end up getting back into streaming more regularly. And I'm certainly going to be putting out more content. Now that I know if there are discussions about race and gender and critical race theory, you're the guy in the roster. You're somebody who's not only very educated on the subject, you're happy to have the conversation with either fellow mm-hmm. leftists who are uninformed or conservatives who are just wrong. Is that fair yeah. to say? Like, that's you're happy to do that? Yeah, I would say so. Um, although I, I am admittedly, um, although I, I, I'm kind of like, in between worlds on this like i i, I want to be hesitant in what i, I mean my channel's already got so much controversial stuff on it that i think i'm kind of already like like the like cat's out of the bag even though like i'm very much not well known um but if i want to keep that content there uh then, then the cat's out of the bag that i that I, I engage with like those spicy topics with the, the spicy people um but I mean, yeah, I, I think like um, <laughs> there, was, there was a conversation I had. It was a big, big politically provoked debate when they were still on YouTube with and one of these guys popped in this guy they love over there called Sean Last. who's like a big race realist guy. Um, and I got him in our conversation, like to just kind of yield. He, he just thinks black people are kind of stupid. And I was like, OK, well, I mean, like, that's, that's what well, we got. At least we got down to brass tacks about it, like. Um, but, uh, I don't remember where I was he dropped, I was he dropped pretense there and just kind of, you know, instead of yeah. dancing around the issue, you know, like many racists do, um, I, I guess he, yeah, brass tacks. He was just like, Hey, we're not gonna, we're not gonna, you're not gonna have to chase me down seven different rabbit holes yeah. to get me to back in the corner. I'm just going to walk there and say that I've got an issue with this particular race. Um, you know, I, I don't. I don't know. I have I've watched just a couple of politically provoked because um so like what Sax and I are gonna do with with this again, this like weekly project and what I will probably wanna do if I start getting like back into streaming more is I'm not looking to talk to just anybody about anything in the sense that I like like I said in the beginning, there's some conversations that I'm, I would either need to prepare for or that I just don't think would serve any utility, like um, that I would make it worse or wouldn't do a good job debunking it, or that the particular actor involved is so egregiously bad faith it would just be essentially drama farming. I, I, I understand why some people are mentally prepared and willing to do it because I feel like it's a dirty job and somebody has to. I'm just not that guy. I... I, I, I it takes a lot out of me to like, you know, like I like you, you mentioned uh, uh, La, La, Lav, um, mm-hmm. seen just a, a little bit of some of the content with, with Destiny, right? But most of it I'm not familiar with because it's just kind of drama farming, and that's not my bag. Like, if I want drama, um, I will. I mean, I've got a big family. I've got 12 nieces and nephews, four sisters. I've got, you know, I've got a bunch of friends. I love watching TV. I, I'm happy to watch, you know, uh, a soap opera or like a scripted drama or something like that. I don't want to be just like super tacky. And I feel like, I feel like pro- politically provoked as a platform just kind of can get really tacky, you know, like. It's not, it's just kind of a mudslinging contest. And again, somebody's got to do it. The left has to have a presence there because the right's congregating there. And I think somebody who's willing and able, like, yep, I'll put on my muck boots, 
and do my best. And, yeah, and I'm I'm glad I'm glad you're doing that. But like I, as far as like what what I want to do and like tapping you for the roster like that, I would not. I, this this isn't. I'm not looking to have any conversation with just any conservative or whatnot. It would need to be relatively thoughtful, relatively good faith. Somebody like Toftaj, somebody like Eucharist. Yeah, I was on a panel with them, not so erudite. They're they're both conservative. Mm-hmm. I like them and respect them both quite a bit. Um, even somebody like again like Rob Nor, a lecture fan, like I I I have my issues with them, but I do believe they sincerely believe the things that they say. And I, as far as I know, I don't think they're racist. Counterpoints would be another one. Somebody like that. Yeah, I like counterpoints. I talked to them a couple times. Yeah. So like you know, it, it's uh, this is not a uh, a drama farming project. And if that costs you know views, I don't care because it's just I, I don't know. I I, I kind of like what you said earlier. You either you know these people and these channels which are very informative but light on the entertainment side of things i'd really like mm-hmm. to do more of the infotainment style try to try to make the conversations engaging but also sincere and and yeah. you know hopefully informative so well uh, i'm very much on board with that project uh, that, that that was a very very meaningful message to me and one that i i, I yeah it's very very dear to my heart so have you ever done a? Um, I know you've you've talked to him, but hey, remind me, have you ever collaborated with uh, Sam uh, Broadley Hill? Oh no, I haven't. I actually, I haven't even talked to him personally. It oh, was, you haven't. He he was on like right. He was on with Hunter like moments before I was. Um, I feel like um, you two would be a pretty lethal combination on some of these topics because he's a pretty chill guy, and on oh, and also. Um, Oh, uh, shit. Uh, uh, Jangles. Jangles. Yeah, yeah, I really like Jangles. I've been a fan of his for... I, I, Uh-oh. A lot of the sphere, I watch them like 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 come up. Yeah. Oh, you just froze there for a minute. Hang on one second. It might be me. Listening to everybody. Hang on one second. I think it was on my end. I'm sorry. Say something now. Check, check, test, test. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of a lag. But anyway, okay. I'm sorry. You were saying. Yeah. Oh, I was just saying I like Dangles. Um, yeah. I, I I watched him and I I said I've been on the sidelines for a long time, just kind of watching all these people pop into the sphere and uh, following them and enjoying their content. Um, and uh, you know, some of them I, I've become a, I've become associated with over time, and others uh, I am still keep an eye out for an opportunity so. fair enough yeah well let's uh see if we can make that happen but um man i appreciate you doing this um i know it's yeah, uh, we're on the same time zone so i'm gonna i'm gonna close this out but uh thank you for coming on and helping me test this and it was really nice to talk to you in person so to speak and put a face to the name and a glove to the hand uh and a spilled drink to the carpet um but uh yours. Oh, you managed to you managed to get it in time before it splattered on the floor. No, it's wood floors. Oh, so, you're good. So, then you're good. I mean, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. Well, yeah, really, I appreciate you having me. This was a really cool conversation. Uh, I I will probably download it from your YouTube channel. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, just FYI, and I I need to tell people this because I don't know what the etiquette is. Uh, anytime somebody has a conversation with me, they're more than welcome to stream it and publish it because I I would want people to tell me that too you know i'm trying to grow my stuff and um Mm -hmm. so it's um this as far as i'm concerned you know the participants have just as much right to it as anybody else so love that well uh i guess i will fill then um so i am radical coder orion Uh, i talk about a lot of different things i I really want to talk about education and computer science and math but um uh, unfortunately it does seem like the uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of scary stuff happening around the world, so um, we we have to continue to have uh, ancient conversations about race and gender and things that are interesting. But uh, um, I, I don't think that a lot of the conversations are, are really poisoned. Um, so hopefully, I can bring a little uh, antidote to that. And uh, yeah, so thanks for having me on, Ruminate. Absolutely, man. You have a good night. Okay, thank you. You as well, buddy. Bye. Hey, you. 
Yeah, you. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, and I hope that you did, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe. Also, my link tree is in the description below, so if you have a sec, go ahead and share the love on all my social media accounts. Also, if you want to express an opinion, eternal devotion, or undying contempt, go ahead and leave a comment because we're always looking for feedback. And on that note, I look forward to pondering politics and pop culture again with you very soon.